JMS Flower Farms has been helping grape growers protect their vines from insects and fungal diseases with their exclusive product, JMS Stylet Oil, since 1992. Visit www.stylitoil.com today. Hi, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine reporting to you from the Sun Made Growers of California kickoff seminar in Selma. Growers in attendance gain valuable knowledge on how to protect their vineyards from the potential frost that may come our way. Bill Peacock, a grower and former UC specialist, provided some great insight on the subject. So that's the passing part of frost protection, and it's really the most important. It's, it's, it's managing the heat resources in your soil so you can maximize the heat reservoir during the daytime and maximize the amount of heat that radiated at night. Well, frost protection is uh, critical this time of the year. Uh, we have to worry about uh, frost beginning at bud break, which is usually around, for Thompson seedless, it's usually around uh, middle of March. This year we're about 10 days early, so we, we're under risk even earlier than normal. And then the period goes all the way up to about uh, middle of April. And after the middle of April, if you look at uh, records, it freezes very rarely. So after the middle of April, you can begin disking ground and doing things you shouldn't be doing uh, during that frost danger period. We have had frost as late as the 23rd of uh, April. And so um, uh, even if you're thinking about disking in the middle of May, you might want to check on the the weather report, make sure there's not a cold front coming through. As far as, uh, as damage uh, is concerned, uh, uh, when you're in the dormant period and you have a dormant bud, uh, temperatures can get down to uh, 20, uh, 20, 22 degrees, uh, maybe even colder without any damage, unless the vine hasn't been hardened off properly. Uh, when the bud begins to swell and uh, it gets a little fuzzy, uh, it can handle uh, probably 26, 27, 28 degrees. Um, but once the green starts to appear, then um, the, uh, the temperature that uh, it can tolerate is 31 degrees, 32 degrees, 31 degrees. And um, as far as recovery is concerned, if you get frosted early, when uh, not all the buds have pushed and a lot of them are in the eraser or fuzzy stage and just a few green shoots out, Thompson seedless can recover fairly well and you should be able to come back uh, with 60-70% crop. But if all the buds are out and the clusters are exposed, which is what we have right now, uh, then 31 degrees could really do a lot of damage. Uh, the best way for frost protection, there's both uh, uh, is, is passive uh, protection, and that means that you need to store as much temperature in the ground as you can at, at uh, night, and then that uh, radiates at night. And if you have bare ground uh, that's moist at field capacity, and uh, uh, let's say a loamy soil, um, that's your warmest condition. Um, the worst situation would be if you had freshly disc ground because the ground is dry and it's the water in the ground that holds the heat. Or if you had uh, uh, high grass uh, because that acts like a blanket in reverse. And again, solar radiation during the, the daylight hour doesn't warm the, the moisture uh, at, at, at night. And so passive protection is critical. You probably get 80% uh, of your, your frost protection out of having bare, moist, grass-free soil. Active protection has to do with running water during the frost event and the heat is, comes, that you get from the water cooling. And uh, the more water you have, the, the more you can uh, uh, protect the field. But the heat that you put on the field by pumping water out of the ground, let's say it's at 60 degrees, the heat that is released from 60 uh, during the night down to 32 degrees. If you have, you may get a half a degree or one degree if you if you have uh, um, if you're pumping like five gallons a minute per acre, or ten gallons a minute per acre, which is what a drip system would put out. Uh, if you have 30 or 40 gallons per acre, which is a huge amount of water, uh, you can uh, you can get a couple of degrees protection. But again. Most of your heat is coming from the, from the heat stored in the soil and then the heat from the water adds a little bit more. 
With a drip system, it's sort of the same thing, except that, that you're not storing as much water in the soil. We've done some work and shown that, uh, that we get the, the soil, uh, maybe 30% of the soil wetted to field capacity of the vineyard floor. So we get not as much passive protection as if, if you had a, a furrow system. And the amount of heat that you get by running the drip system is, uh, is pretty marginal because you're not putting much water on. The key to drip is to start running that system three or four days, two or three, two days at least, three or four days before the frost event so that you can get as much moisture in the ground and store as much heat in the ground as you possibly can. And then that'll radiate uh, during the night of the frost or the morning of the frost. The, um, the idea of just turning your drip, having, having run your system for three weeks, your drip system for three weeks, and all of a sudden it looks like it's gonna frost, turn it on that evening, you're not getting nearly as much uh, uh, heat doing that as you would if you started two or three days early. So I think that really the bottom line of, of my talk was uh, for drip irrigating vineyards and try to get these growers to realize that you need to, to get the ground wet ahead of the, ahead of the frost. And, and then during the night of the frost, you can turn on your drip system. You'll get a little heat from that, but not a, not a lot. Thank you, Bill. We never know when frost will come, but it's always great to be prepared. I'm Matthew, reporting from Sunmade Growers Seminar, CaliforniaAgnet.com.